This is Local Tech Man. Welcome back. So you want to know how to build a computer? Well, let me help you out. You know what I got here? This is a Lenovo Think Center M900. I don't know if you've seen these before, but people buy them for 125, 150, 200 bucks. I got it for $50 on eBay. It didn't have a hard drive or an operating system. You know something funny about the operating system? Look at this. Windows Pro. So it already has a license attached to this computer. So the only thing I had to do is load the original operating system and it's gonna work. What else can I tell you about this little computer? It's cheap, it's reliable, it's 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 a you can do a home lab, you can do a whole bunch of stuff, and it's easy to work with. Oh, what happened there? Oh wow, so easy to open, so easy to access the internals and start working with it and start replacing stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be building this today so you guys know how to build an actual computer. And a lot of these principles are gonna stand true to a larger computer because it has a motherboard, it has fans, it has a socket for the CPU, it has RAM, storage, the same thing, the same uh, architecture is gonna apply to different computers. This is just gonna give you a good idea on how to start building computers. And I, this is one example, I have two. The other one is gonna be undone on my table. Let's go to my table so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so we have our Lenovo Think Center M900 in front of us. You can see here, motherboard, components are taken off so we can put them back into the computer. And we have different components that we gotta make sure we have. When you're building a computer, you gotta have a case we all know that the case helps keep the internal components safe. We got our motherboard and you can see here it's attached to the case with screws. And that's how it stays in place and it doesn't move. Then we have different components like a CPU, RAM, depending on how much you want to have in there. I recommend at least eight and you can go as high as you want. This is a storage enclosure for your SSD or hard disk drive. Now I am going to do an SSD 2.5 inch and I'll show you what it is. Now this is a 2.5 inch SSD. It's a lot quicker than a hard drive, but it's less quicker or it's, it's not as fast as an M.2 NVMe, but I'm not installing an M.2 NVMe. If you wanted to do an NVMe, let me show you how. Now, let's say you opted for our M.2 NVMe. The only thing you have to do here is find where it goes. And it normally looks like this. You can see it goes in. And you have to put it in at an angle. And then you push it down. And then it's, you have that plastic piece that keeps it down like this. Otherwise, it's going to come right up. It needs to be sitting down either with a screw or the plastic cap or whatever you have on your computer. When you want to remove it, let it come up. And remember, slide it out and it should be easy to pull and to push in. Do not try to do it like this. You can damage uh, these sockets and you'll have another problem. Okay, we're not using this again. We're gonna be using this today. So let's get to it. Like I said, you have different components. You have your case, motherboard, CPU, RAM, storage, fans. You got to make sure everything is placed correctly. Otherwise, your computer is not going to work or it's going to heat or you're going to have problems. So let's get started. We have all of our components in here. Let me undo this, which is for the uh, hard disk enclosure. I'm going to put it over here. For me, the easy part is going to be to just put in the CPU. CPU, you see this arrow right here? So that arrow is going to point at this circle right here on the motherboard. You see it right there. Right here. So that's kind of like the landmark, you know, it's supposed to go that way. And also, you can see how it falls in place. It falls in, in place perfectly. Now, bring down 
the little cage here, push it down, boom, that way it doesn't come out. See, it's in place. Now, something I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one here. This is a HDMI adapter for the computer. You buy them on Amazon or eBay for really cheap. Just make sure the connection sits correctly how it's supposed to. Alrighty, so we see a lip that takes a form like this. Boom. Goes there. They sell these uh, set of tools on Amazon for cheap. Just make sure you get a iFixit is a good brand as well. Get something that works for you. iFixit can be expensive. Something that I always say is you don't have to get the most expensive equipment. You can get something cheap that has good reviews and that'll do. It has two screws. So we're going to put it here. Okay. Boom. That easy. We have an HDMI connection now. Because you can see all the other ones. Display port, display port. And to be honest, a lot of, a lot of different uh, equipment has uh, HDMI connections. Now, we have our coin battery right there. The CMOS battery. We have our RAM, 8 gigabytes. Same thing applies. Put it in, in diagonal like this. Push it in. Huh, went in easy. You push it in and then, boom. You see these brackets? If you want to remove it, you just open it up like that. And it'll release it, it'll come out, and then you can slide it out just like that. Boom. So we have our display connection, our CPU, our RAM. And now there's a lot of debate out there on how to apply thermal paste to a CPU, right? Just do whichever you're comfortable. If you don't know how to do ter applying thermal paste, I would recommend doing the five dots. I'll show you in a second. You can do a smiley face. You can do a C. As in Sivra or at X, whatever you feel comfortable. It's your computer. You know, if you break it, you pay for it. But don't pay, don't don't break it. Definitely, we we don't want you to break it. So, just go with the nor known good, the known normal way of doing it. I want to close it so you guys can see. Okay, so we have our CPU. I was having a problem uh, focusing because sometimes the camera has a mind of its own. So what I'm going to do in this specific case, I'm going to do five dots. May have applied a little more than I wanted, but I think it's all right. It's not that much. And it's something you're going to get used to. If you're applying thermal paste often, you'll know how to do it a lot better. Now, I don't claim to be an expert in applying thermal paste, but I've done it a few times and I never had an issue. So now, you're going to grab your heat sink for your CPU. So that uh, thermal paste is going to go in here and it's going to spread out. It's going to allow that heat transfer to have, to be more efficient. So now I'm going to grab this, put it in place. Make sure when you're putting this in there, that you put it correctly. Cause you got to consider that you are going to be coming in contact with that thermal paste. 
and everything that I tighten, I try to do a star pattern. Okay, so now we have our CPU and our heat sink making contact and the thermal paste has spread it out. Now what we can do now is can, we can make sure this uh, connection. Now we're going to have to make sure this connection is going to the dry place. You can see the connection here. Goes right there. Okay, now that we have our heat sink in place, we know we're going to need a fan to keep this heat sink cool. So to transfer that hot air out and bring in cold air so that the heat sink can stay cool which in turn will keep the CPU cold. Now we're going to sit there, sit this here. Now I'm realizing something. This cable is supposed to go under this one. And this is getting in the way, so we're going to have to remove it. We're going to see there, this little connection there, right here. Because I can point it with this right there and we have to make sure this goes in correctly so you can see here this little pieces here the little lips that come out or little squares and you can see the two little squares on this end right there that's how it makes sense of how it goes in And, and we have it in place. Now, we can put this connector back in place so that it grabs on. That's fine. Getting ready to put on that SSD. This is the enclosure for the SSD. Okay. So this piece goes in here. That screw right there. Now what we're gonna do, and you guys see this uh, wireless card, right? You see it's how it's missing a connection right next to it, right? Okay, so it has that cable and then that empty space. You can see how the other cable goes and follows all the way here and goes here for an antenna. Now, you don't need an antenna, but an antenna is going to help you get a better signal from, uh, from a distance. All right. Now, we're going to sit this here. You guys do see this little uh, metal, metal tower, right? It's kind of like this one. These ones right here. You guys see that it has like a little space here. So in that space, the bracket goes in and sits there. You can see it, right? That's why it has a little, little, uh, little bit of space to let it in so it can sit there. And you guys see here, putting it in, it's going to go here. And at the same time, it's going to fall in place with these back ones. It's three in total. You guys can see how it goes in, right? These two, and then this other one. There you go, right here. So it sits there nicely. Okay. So sit it in, the, in there. And then I would push in that SSD first. Boom. You can see how it goes in. Now you can push this in. And officially you can tighten it down. But I'm slowly moving away from these. And I'm now doing a M.2s because they're so much faster. And as you guys can see here, we have a almost fully built PC. Don't forget to grab this little guy. Let's set it in place. Finally. Okay, we have those two connections sitting in place. 
Now the last step is putting in the faceplate. It's quite easy. Just recognize the back end, which is going to have all these USBs and power connection. You're going to see these uh, audio jacks here. Bring your faceplate with the audio jacks and power button pointing forward. And this part here is going to come in. That's my that's my good reference. This part has to be in this area. Sits, then you bring it back. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, how you build up a Lenovo Think Center M900. Now, let's say you want to buy it off of eBay for cheap. Make sure you buy it from a reputable uh, seller that has reviews. And that is a, an extra step you can take to make sure that whatever you get sent is going to be in, in better condition than, than if you go to a first time seller that you don't know what their intentions are. And as you can see, the system is in pretty decent shape. Now we have an SSD, 128 gigabytes. We have a uh, eight gigabytes RAM. We have a uh, i5 CPU and it's, it's a pretty decent, uh, computer for whatever purpose you want to use it. Maybe you want to use it for a travel computer or something else. But I'm going to make a video on how to load a Windows 11 image into a new computer. That's going to be a following video. So I hope you like it. And I hope you can uh, come and see more of my videos. Uh, have a nice day. Do subscribe. Take care.